Today I'm going to tell you what the difference is between cheap and expensive equipment for your reef tank and I'll suggest where I think you can save money and where I think it's worth spending a little extra. And if it's your first time here and you want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. Let's kick off then with the limitations of cheap equipment. The first thing you'll notice is the design and build quality. Almost all of the cheap equipment I use isn't especially aesthetically pleasing and it's usually not exactly made of the finest materials. My Jekod return pumps are lighter than the Ecotech pumps I've used and they're made from cheap scratchy feeling plastics. The control boxes also look like they were designed by the work experience kid. They're boxy and basic and in the case of my Jekod powerheads the design is quite busy and it's not immediately obvious what all of the buttons and lights do. But it's not just design that suffers, and in my experience Jekod powerheads don't like being left out of water for any length of time, and I find they can struggle to start again after being left out to dry and make more noise when they eventually do, or they give up the ghost entirely. And that's regardless of how much time I've spent stripping them down and cleaning them. So while I generally find the cheap equipment I have is pretty reliable, on a big enough scale and for the most part, I'd bet money on the failure rates of cheap equipment being higher than that on expensive equipment. In terms of skimmers, I've had a few from Bubble Magus in the past and they feel a bit cheap and nasty and in my experience they start to look old before their time as they scratch easily and seem to resist cleaning more than expensive kit. The one exception is my Evergrow lights which I actually think look quite nice, although at £540 for the 4 foot version, I suspect many people would say I'm stretching the definition of cheap. But it comes with hanging wires and a tank mount, which means it's pretty much the same price as the equivalent Radeon XR15, yet the Evergrow is at least twice as powerful. But even the Evergrow loses points on build quality when you scratch beneath the surface. The power supply, the most common point of failure on most electronics, isn't particularly premium and when you open the unit up, the reduction in quality is readily apparent. So I think it's fair to say the quality of components tends to be poor on cheap reefing kit. And the worst example of that relates to safety. On any Jekod pump I've ever had, I get a small spark if I unplug the power connector while the plug is turned on, which as you'd expect, I don't get on my more high-end equipment like my Vortec MP40s. Cheap kit also tends to have more limited functionality. The latest Jekod pumps are now app controlled, but I can't demonstrate that because, hilariously enough, I can't get the bastard to work. And in any event, the vast majority of their kit can only be controlled manually by the physical control box. And the infrared control for my Evergrow lights is my least favourite part. You can only set start points by the hour, not the minute, and making a small change to my lighting schedule usually involves amending every single time point, which is a total ball ache. So what do you get over and above that with posher brands like Ecotech? Well, build quality and design is the first thing that hits you. There's something reassuring about a solid feeling piece of equipment, and on the limited occasions I've taken expensive equipment apart, it's always looked well put together and the components have a more premium look and feel. And ultimately, a tank is a piece of furniture, so for some people it's important that the tank kit looks nice. And even as an advocate of Evergrow lights, I can't argue for one moment that Radions don't look a lot cooler over your tank. And that goes double for Vortec powerheads that are about as sexy as a powerhead can be. And while my claim that failure rates are lower with expensive kit is based on common sense rather than data, when expensive kit does go wrong, the aftercare is vastly superior. When my Jekod pumps stop working, I just throw them in the bin. But when I've had problems with my MP40s, all it's taken is a couple of emails to Ecotech and they've replaced the faulty part for free even when the pumps were over three years old and well out of warranty, and that peace of mind, combined with a bit of help when something goes wrong, is invaluable for some people and is a real stress reducer. I would say though that you don't always get better quality with expensive kit. My Deltek skimmer costs the thick end of £400 and yet is more or less the cheapest feeling thing in my tank. It's made of thin scratchy materials and uses a cheap Jekod pump. But despite that, it works brilliantly. And that brings me on to performance and functionality. Most expensive equipment has usually undergone a fair degree of research and development, and if I was cynical I'd say cheaper brands take inspiration from the bigger brands. But I'm not, so I won't. 
But while imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, it is no substitute for knowledge, and I find performance is generally better one way or another with almost all of my premium equipment. LED lights give a smoother and better spread than my laser beam ever grows, which is why I need 8 square feet of light mounted almost a foot off the water surface. My AI Nero 5s and Vortec MP40s are both quieter than the equivalent Jekods and give a wider spread of flow. And they're easier to dismantle for cleaning, and I find I can completely strip back my MP40s and Neros, whereas the same isn't true of my Jekods. And not only are the controllers and displays on expensive kit much easier on the eye and more tactile feeling, they also contain the gubbins needed to connect via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi or even the cloud. And while some apps can be a little frustrating, for the most part Expensive Kit has intuitive software and some apps like the Smart Reef app from Refactory are an absolute pleasure to use. Now as with most of my videos, I'm not trying to tell you which option is best, my intention is just to talk you through the pros and cons of each so you can weigh up what suits your needs and make a more informed decision. But a video like this without my opinion would be as anticlimactic as a fart without the smell, so here goes. First and foremost then, there is nothing wrong with buying cheap kit, and if you're on a tight budget, don't let anyone tell you you need to buy expensive kit. You don't. Jekod powerheads move water just fine, and they come with pulse and random modes, as well as intensity controls that will provide perfectly decent flow for all corals from basic softies like pulsing Xenia, all the way through to high-end Aquapora. And all in all, my Evergrow lights are better for my corals than my previous Kessels and Radions, which were underpowered because I couldn't afford more units. And while I don't have a Bubble Maker skimmer anymore, they do a perfectly decent job of removing fish poo, which at the end of the day is all you really want. Now lights are probably one area that I personally wouldn't recommend skimping on. While I love my Evergrows, the spread sucks, so most newer reefers would probably just buy one unit and end up with too much light down the middle of their tank and not enough light down the sides. And cheaper lights generally require you to understand how to use them properly in order to work around their limitations, which will take a lot more research, assuming you even know the right place to look in the first place, and even then you will likely still end up with a polished turd rolled in glitter. And overall, you really do get what you pay for. The functionality, aesthetics, ease of maintenance and aftercare you get with expensive kit is money well spent in my book. And expensive kit can certainly help make your tank awesome and has other perks that you will feel the benefit of, even if your corals won't necessarily. And if money is no object, I don't think there's any cheap kit I'd recommend over the most expensive stuff on the market. But the reality is that the vast majority of us do have a budget, and ultimately it's not the equipment that determines how good your tank will look, it's you. So get the best kit you can afford, but don't sweat it if you don't end up with as much bling as your favourite YouTuber, he's probably just compensating for something else anyway.